Well, that sounds okay. Jeff Green. Yeah. I'm just showing uh, my new shoes to um, Jane Horrocks, who has joined us, and okay. she was quite impressed. Jane, what do you think of that? I think they're lovely. I, I, I was looking for the laces, but there aren't any laces. No, it's the modern way, it? apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Very elasticated. But so that they're elasticated, but also because they're slightly too long for me, if you, they do look va- vaguely clown like, don't they? I've got big feet in you know, it. <laughs> I've got a kind of like an odor eater type thing at the bottom to stop them from slipping off. There you go. Secrets revealed. And now you. Dirty shoes when I sat off today, and I thought, I can't go on your show with dirty shoes, so I had to scrape the mud off. Well, they, they, I wouldn't have known they had been dirty until you told me they look quite clean and fresh. Yeah, they do, because I went down and cleaned them because you've they gone with have the, mud on them. You've earlier. gone with the flat shoe, which I believe is back in style at the moment. It is, yes, with the teenagers. The leggings are back as well. Yes. And, get this, the puffball skirt. Is it? Mm-hmm. Do you have any of those? No, 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 not anymore. Jane, you're not a fashion person? Mm, not really. You, no. don't like, you don't indulge? Well, I, I do, but I, I, I just don't get it right. You see, with a puffball skirt, I don't think anyone gets it right, do they? No. <laughs> so but I'd be just, all right with that one. Yeah, it's just wonder. wrap a big bag around your waist, <laughs> yes. isn't it? Um, it's lovely to have you. Thank you for coming on. I've admired you as an actor for many, many years. OK? Uh, that, that sounds like I don't Is like other parts yes. of you. Yeah, no, for, for real. Ever since I saw... What was the Mike Lee thing you were in years ago? Life is sweet. Life is sweet. And it wasn't just because you were smeared in chocolate and naked from the waist up. It was because <laughs> it was a tremendous performance. Obviously, that helped. And I still know some people who <laughs> that only... That horrific, that scene. Well, that must have been pretty tough to do, wasn't it? Ha- well, it was all right. I was tied to the bedpost. I couldn't really move in between hey, takes. It's all coming back to me now. <laughs> <laughs> but that I would have thought quite, uh, joking aside, and we sort of are, mm. that must be quite, because obviously you're in a very vulnerable position anyway. You're acting mm. you're in front of a crew, and then and then you're tied up, and then you've got very few clothes <laughs> yes, on. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. there's bread chocolate they on go, you. They go and get the sandwiches whilst I'm still tied there. <laughs> Freezing and chocolate right, after Jane? a while. <laughs> you're right there for a little while. <laughs> like a very a spectacular <laughs> Easter gift. <laughs> um, more than one take involved in that, or just you did it quickly? Well, I hadn't had to do anything, really. It was David <laughs> Hewlett who had to do, do the licking yes. part. And um, <laughs> no doubt he remembers it fondly still. See, we hit the ground running very quickly. Yeah, I didn't mean to go in. straight into... Mm. Uh, that was question two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're back on TV. You're on the BBC uh, with a show called The Amazing Mrs Pritchard. Now, this is something... Is it Pritchard or Pritchard? Well, I say Pritchard, but Pritchard. some people say Pritchard. Yeah, so I just said that, Pritchard. It was, a, it was a bit of a... a debate, really, when we were doing it. Who was to say Pritchard or Pritchard? I think Pritchard sounds nicer. Hmm, Pritchard sounds a bit, bit abrupt. Uh, t- if people haven't seen it yet, I know the two have gone out and the third one is six in the series. The third one's going out this Tuesday. Uh, how would you describe it, both both the what's happening in it but also the tone of the piece? Well, it's very light. The first episode is very light, but then it gets much more serious politically as it goes on. Um, I mean, it's the first episode is really inviting people in to, to Come watch in it. and to, enjoy the show, yeah. Yes, and and uh, she's, she's a fairly regular woman to begin with, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's an ordinary working woman uh, with kids and uh, runs her supermarket and happily getting on with life. And then this event happens where she's got to break up two uh, MPs who were fighting. And, um, and then um, she decides to stand... Because she's ticket. had enough of nonsense hmm. MPs, which I think, why it's such a great idea for a show, of course, is it's, I think a thought that's crossed all out minds yes. at some stage. You all think, wouldn't I be doing a better job? Yeah. Does it appeal to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Andy, do you think you'd make a good nah, pre-amp? No, not at all. You think you would do, don't you? Listen, I think I, I would be great as a pre and you'd be great as my second in Oh, would I? Yeah. Well, yeah. well, I'm, like, good, I'm yeah. like the Gordon Brown of... No, more like mm. the Prescott. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Well, you are more like a Prescott figure, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> no. And, and a, a, as an act of blatant tokenism, we get Jane on board as well, so we get the ladies' vote. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> well, where sure. would I fit in? Well, what would you like to do? Oh, I don't know. A health. Health's a good one. Mm. Health. We could do health and... You could be health and efficiency. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's two words you don't hear next to each other quite as often. Um, it's, it's a lovely idea for a show, and it's kind of... What I've seen so far has been very light, but you're saying it gets a bit more serious as it goes on. Yeah, it does. I mean, people have sort of been talking about the manifesto, that there's no manifesto laid out in the programme, and the policies are a little sparse. And, yeah. But there are things that come up which are policies mm. um, that, that, that come up in later episodes and, uh, you know, you, you, you get a very clear idea of what Ros Pritchard wants for a country. It sounds pretty similar to the way David Cameron's running his campaign, of course, <laughs> which is, you know, here I am, come in, be friendly, no get, policies. get to know me first and then we'll yes. talk about what we're going to yes. do once yes. I'm in. Yes, I'm going to do it very slowly. But, you know, d- doesn't it strike you sometimes you think we couldn't do any worse than some of the people we've had? I don't know where you stand on the current government, but certainly, you know, I know they've even people who are further to Mars have feel let down in some ways by yes, what they've well, done. So you get that feeling that no matter who we put in there, maybe it should just be fairly random. Hmm. Well, yeah, it would make a change, wouldn't it? And make a change to have somebody who actually sort of spoke most people's language. Reg- regular English. Yes. Um, do you think... We, I was joking earlier and I said, would we ever have a uh, 
to ask Andy if we would ever have a female Prime Minister. Um, and bearing in mind that Margaret Thatcher was, a, was an unusual breed. Well, I don't know, you know... <laughs> <laughs> in, in Do you not think she was a woman? Well, she was like a kind of, in a weird sort of way, like a super person, mm, you know what yeah. I mean? She, I, I don't think she was ever defined by her gender, mm. is what I mean. Uh, just in the way that most male P- PMs are, tend to be defined by their gender, but not in the case of Tony Blair so much, I think. <laughs> you know, so weirdly, he's also mm. another of those people you don't think of as a man first. No, that's true. <laughs> you know, where's Harold Wilson? You knew where you stood yes, with Wilson. Yes, Pipe, Mac... Um, <laughs> But do you think, I mean, if we had a woman, do you think that a woman would ever get elected who seemed to be a more conventional woman, who was actually more open about her emotions and that kind of stuff? Oh, well, I think so. Um, uh, I mean, I, I think anybody who... Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I can't answer that question. <laughs> I, admire, I admire your honesty. <laughs> it's unusual for me to ask an actual question as well, as you know. So, so I know that. You stumped me there. I thought, oh, you ask the question and then you answer it. <laughs> That's what I normally do, of course. I'll answer it for you later yes. on. Um, was it fun to make the show? Was it, was it an enjoyable experience? Yes, it was. It was very hard work. It was a tough schedule, and uh, I've never played a lead in a series before. Oh, really? So it was, uh, it, uh, you know, I, I was on pretty much in every scene, and uh, yeah, it was, it was, um, it was tough. But I did enjoy it, and, and I loved you. Sally Wainwright has written brilliant scripts, and um, I loved the material. So and, and the cast were all fantastic as well. Lovely directors. So lovely, how, lovely. How long does something like that take to shoot? Then, if you're doing six shows. Uh, just over three months. Wow, so it's quite a big yeah, chunk of, very, of your life, really. Yeah. And I imagine that period, those days are pretty long days as well. Yeah, they are, yeah. yeah. How does that affect your family, I think? So I know you have two children, so you're out working like that. Does your mm. husband step in and, and do that, or do you have to try and juggle much more yourself? Um, no, no, my, my fella did help out. I got a nanny, and, um, and you sort of do it like that, really, because I was staying away as well, even though I was... Uh, filming near to where I live in Shepparton, um, I decided to live in a hotel because I can't prize myself away from the washing machine. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I just... Uh, in terms of yeah. actually doing the cleaning or you like to sit on it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's establish exactly what we're talking about here, Jade. <laughs> no, it's uh, a thrill in a different way. Are you a domesticated person then? Y- yes, I am. So I had to be taken away from all domestic activity. Why is that? I don't know, I just love it. And, and my, my fellow had to tell me off. He said, stop thinking about the washing and just get on with your job. Is it just the washing or is it the dusting? It's mainly it... the washing. Do you no, do ironing washing. as well? No, I don't do ironing, it's just washing. You'd like to do the washing? Mm, I'm pegging out. That's, but that's, I mean, it, it's, it's, <laughs> nice, no, it's <laughs> nice to know, but the, the responsibilities don't just end there. You know, you need to spill over into the ironing occasionally. <laughs> Who does the ironing? Monica. So Monica comes and does the ironing for you? Yes. So you don't let anyone else near your washing domain? Uh, no, I'm, I'm very, very particular about it. And pegging as well. Mm. Um, pegging? Yes, <laughs> pegging is... Nick, my fella's mum, pegged for me over the weekend and I wasn't satisfied. Not, not, not a high enough standard pegging? No, it wasn't. What, she put the pegs in the wrong place? <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> you can do it wasn't, that. wasn't efficient. Two socks on one peg. Oh, you can't do two on one peg. What's she thinking? <laughs> She's like a maniac. Is it a long line or is it a circular one? Well, it was a whirly gig. Oh, oh is she it? Didn't, she, I have a whirly gig and a long line and she didn't oh, make well, use of the long line. Oh, right. Well, the long line is for sheets and so on and so forth, I imagine. Uh, well, if you've done that, but the, I'd done the sheets on the long line mm. and then there was a bit of extra line that you could have utilised. Don't waste the, don't waste the line. <laughs> Why put two socks on one peg if there's extra line going spare? And extra pegs. No, but I can understand. Oh, if she didn't, I thought there might be a shortage of pegs and there she was trying to pace pegs. her pegs. There was lots of pegs. I thought, oh, Why? What yeah. happens when you run out of line, though, when there's not sufficient lineage and you still have many damp items in there? Do, yeah. you, do you just have to wait or is there? do you ever go the balcony route? Oh, no. No, no. No. Uh, well, you can be very inventive, actually, and peg at the bottom of shirts, so you're sort of pegging oh. downwards. Ooh. Well, I've doubled up before and put one on top of the other and just hoped it worked. You can't do one on top of the other, but double pegging underneath, I yes. like the sound of that. Yeah. Well, so you hang socks from a shirt sleeve? Yeah, that's good, Ooh. isn't it? Mm. But, but at the same time, don't people just think you're insane? I mean, do your neighbours not look up? I don't she, care. She's out there making peg creatures again. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when I'm dashing in and out when it's raining. Jane. <laughs> Have you heard of a wonderful invention called the tumble dryer? No, I will not use that. Why not? Ecological unsound. Mm. Yeah, but not nice and dry. Oh, and you get no. toasty socks no, to put on. I can't bear it. I can't bear the winter when I've had to use that. A toasty sock? Oh, Oh, no. what's wrong with you, woman? A toasty sock <laughs> no. is one of the nicest things. Warm pants? No, and then if you put your tights in there, they get all bubbled and bits attached to yes, them. Yes, they mm. can bubble. You don't mm. want to put a tight in there, no. Yeah. <laughs> but a sock? All oh, right, avoid cashmere. You can't put anything decent in there. No, with socks, actually, get the whole bubble effect. But bearing in mind, the majority of our listeners right now almost entirely clad in synthetic fibres, <laughs> OK? <laughs> For them... And indeed, for me, yeah. a tumble dryer is a godsend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, I've already gained votes, haven't I? Yeah. The women who, who are listening to this thinking, yes, that's a woman after my own Do you heart. think your, your northern roots 
is what's made you cleave to the pegging so much and still adhere to the pegging when many of us have abandoned the pegging. <laughs> yes, yes, but it is a very northern thing to peg. Mm. And it infuriates me if somebody's got a good garden <laughs> and it's nice weather <laughs> and they haven't got a line. Yeah, I haven't got a line. Well, that's mm. ridiculous. Well, why would I have a line? Well, you, ha- would, you would like a line. If you've got a line <sighs> or a whirly gig, you'd love it. I'm going to tell you something that's probably going to upset We could go to the news. OK, we'll say this afterwards, but I have some sort of, like, clothes washing uh, equipment, which I think is going to really rock your foundations. 88 to 91 FM, this is Radio 2 from the BBC. Oh, there you go. What was that? <laughs> what do you mean, what was People that? I think they tuned in the sound of the 60s the drifters. again. drifters! Mm. Oh, dear. Uh, OK, we have with us the, uh, the lovely Jane Hawks. Now, listen, Jane. We've been discussing pegging out. You're a big fan of the, the great outdoors. Mm. You believe that nature should dry. Yes. Okay. You don't like the tumble dryer? No, I don't. OK. It doesn't smell nice from the tumble dryer. Well, really, it does if you put one of those little bits of paper in that smell nice. <laughs> Bounce or something. I know, but it's all false. It's false, phony. Yeah, but it smells it's phony of like, smell. It smells of springtime. Chemical springtime. Do you not believe in saving the environment? I do, but but next year I'm going to save <laughs> enough to make up for this year that I didn't save quite as much as I... Do you recycle? Uh, yes, I do recycle. What do you recycle? Re- I recycle newspapers, mm. cans, mm. bottles and jokes. Do you recycle plastic? <laughs> uh, we do recycle plastic, and I especially like, like most men, scrunching up the Evian bottles. <laughs> oh, I can't do that. Of course you can't, you're I'm a lady. I'm not strong enough. <laughs> yeah, so you need a man in your life. Now listen, I have, though, not just a tumble dryer, we have a tumble cupboard. Or a drying cupboard, which is a cabinet you open up and it's got poles in like pegging out, Ooh, but you hang things nice. on it and it circulates the air around it. Well, that sounds good. Yeah, so it's still not, it's not an outdoors thing. Mm. But it's oh. electric as well. Oh, yeah. So that's so not very... Yeah, yeah so right, they use a special no, electricity no. that comes from, um, <laughs> uh, from the byproduct of, of pegs <laughs> and stuff. And with these very mild winters that you've got, we're having, you can peg all year round. Is it, is it therapeutic, do you think? <laughs> Very. So it's kind of like uh, almost meditation. Mm, it is actually. I never. Wh- what about if you do? Okay, I live very near a crematorium. Yeah. Okay. You don't want to be pegging out when it's a smoky day, do you? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And this time of year, people are starting fires. No, what but if you, like in the north, out? that's when, when you know, with all the mills, yeah. they pegged out with all that smoke. But what do you on. do with it? It's all dirty again, isn't it? Well, no. They pegged out when the mills weren't working okay. on the one day. I, f- <laughs> I feel that possibly we have now broken the world record for the length of a conversation you can have about how to dry your washing. Oh, I could go on and on. I think you probably could, could you? <laughs> yes. I I'm text my fella wherever I'm working, get that washing in, it's about to rain. And he has to rush back from his flat where he works and get my washing in. And, and if he misses it? Oof. Whoa. He puts in the tumble dryer. Well, yes, he, 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 he removes all evidence that he's used the driver, dryer. Is it, um, but, but if, it, if it rains on washing, is that a bad thing? I mean, I know it gets it wet again, but then if it dries out, is it dirty then or is oh, it no, clean? No, that's fine if, it, if it's allowed to dry again, but it, if it has to go into the tumble dryer because it's got wet. That's a sin. Because of negligence. God, blimey. Then, <laughs> <laughs> then that, that mm. is very infuriating. Does he live in fear of you? <laughs> yes. Oh, is it, it, does this get worse at other times? If you're stressed or if there are other things going on in your life, does the Well, pegging... yes, like when I was doing Mrs Pritchard, I was thinking, yeah, probably 50, 50% of the time I was thinking about my washing <laughs> and the other 50 on the work. I bet you someone like Barbara Streisand has a similar obsession. I bet you if you found someone like... You know, there would be a... Because I suspect it's quite mm. common. Yeah, that's why she has to have cue cards now in her concerts. Because she's, she's really... she's thinking about pegging out. Yeah. Has he got it in? Has he got it in? <laughs> yes, has exactly. he put two socks on the one peg? <laughs> um, Jane, as I hope you're aware, is uh, not just a very talented actress, she's also an incredibly gifted singer as well, where you have a great voice. Um, and and I, I, I wasn't aware of that as someone who'd seen you on TV and, and in shows. I wasn't aware of that until you made um, The Further Adventures of Little Voice, of course, right. which was a very... But you'd been in musical theatre f- many times before that, I believe, hadn't you? No. Had you had not? No, no, I'd done um, uh, The Rise and Fall of Little Voice, the, the play at the National Theatre, which was me doing the impersonations. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then I did the play Cabaret. Oh, uh, so you did that afterwards? Cabaret. I thought you did that before. No, I did that afterwards and I've not done one since. Well, why not? So it's just two... Uh, oh, musical but you see, if things. I could sing properly on stage, I'd be on all the time. You'd be able to get me off. Oh, cool, yes. I'm no technique, so I find it very tiring. When I, when my voice gets tired, I don't have any technique to fall back on. Can't you learn the technique? Well, that would make be too sort of hard work, really. Well, that sounds a bit, frankly. No, what is the you technique? have to go all the time, oh, and strengthen your voice, and it's. But for oh, how long really do you do that? Do that that long, do you? 
That's lazy really of you, Jane. Jane no, I'm bit, really lazy. I totally admit that I'm it's lazy. I'm a bit lazy. disappointed in you there. But you've got God-given gift here, if you want to believe in God, which I don't, but, you know, you've got a gift, OK? Oh, I believe in God. OK, well, I'm pleased you do, <laughs> OK? I believe in a, a greater spiritual force. Mm. Mm. I just don't like to name him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you've got a gift like this, come on. Look, I even banged the desk for emphasis. <laughs> come on. Use it. People can go and just see the film. Can't no, they? but you should be on stage doing it four nights a week. Oh, it's really hard work. Lazy hard. If you if you <laughs> were to do it, you would know how hard. After cabaret, I was exhausted. Young lady, if I had the gift to do it, I would be out doing it. And yes, I'd be exhausted, but I'd be happy to share my gift in that way. I'd say, yeah, I'm exhausted, but I can't throw this away. <laughs> oh, I might be rehearsing it. Is it is it more fun doing a, a, a musical performance than straight acting, just without without the singing and dancing involved, or, or are they not comparable? No, I prefer a straight acting part. Yeah, definitely. And why is that? Because it's not as not not demanding. As <laughs> <laughs> well, they're both hard work, but uh, you sort of you know those musical roles aren't really sort of very deep, really, no, are no. they? But Sally um, Bowles is an interesting character. Yeah, she is an got. interesting character, but everybody gets that wrong because they always assume, because Liza Minnelli did it, that she was a great singer, the character, but actually she was a rubbish singer she was and a rubbish great... dancer. She couldn't dance or, or sing. And, um, and I hope that this new production that's about to happen in the West End gets that right. Well, that looks good, the new production. Mm. It looks slightly more kind of, uh, not darker so much, as a little bit more outre. If mm. I may use that word, um, but your one was your other one was um, was it Sam Mendes? Yeah, that's else? right. Yeah. So that yeah. and I didn't get to see that, which I wish I'd seen it. Did what did he do with it? It did was a he... hot ticket. Oh. Mm. Well, he took a lot of the seats out. Well, he did no. The the balcony was still seats, but the, all the bottom part of the Dharma Warehouse was all tables and chairs, like a, like a cabaret. So it would have been like a Weimar but, cabaret. Yes, but he made it a real you know low class uh, cabaret club. It was um, it was yeah. You know, hound of a place. A, a bit of a dive. Bad dancers. Yeah. And, um, you know, sort of, yeah, a real dive. Which is kind of, once again, you're right, it's true to the character and true yeah. to the, the mm. setting of, of the original book as opposed to the, yes. the movie version, which made it seem glamorous and like she was some mm. kind of a polished performer. Yeah, yeah. Although, although it is a great oh, it performance. Is fantastic, minute, isn't it? fantastic performance. Yeah. Brilliant. Who was the MC in your one? Was that Alan Cumming? Alan Cumming, yeah. Yeah, well, that must be fantastic. Yes. I can't believe we didn't go. Mm. No, well, ticket. he went on to New York to do it. Yeah, yeah. And why didn't you? Let me guess. <laughs> is, is, is she has a washing with, with your washing, or are you too bloody lazy? <laughs> well, I was too lazy. I was, as I said, I was too tired to be carrying on in too New York. Too tired? How many weeks did you do it for? Well, he, was, he did it for a whole year in New York. Yeah. I, I was exhausted after four months. Also, he, didn't have, he hasn't got any kids or anything, has he? Well, I didn't then. OK. Well, you didn't have any kids in Port <laughs> No, I was actually doing the film of Little Voice at the time, but I wasn't asked to go to New York. Right. And uh -huh. I was quite cool about that. You didn't mind that? Because I'm too lazy. Hmm. Who played the role in New York? Uh, exactly, exactly. No one's heard of her. Yeah, she's a Redgrave. Um, Natasha uh, Redgrave. Redgrave. Natasha, she's called Natasha? Sure yeah, there is a Natasha. Natasha sure. Redgrave and then Jennifer Jason Lee. Yeah, uh, neither uh, of them can hold a torch to you. No. <laughs> you know, and I don't know if you've seen their washing, but... Oh! <laughs> stinks! <laughs> um, what are we going to play, Eddie? A new single from Graham Coxon, is that right? Well, yeah, we should maybe play a track from Cabaway. Oh, I've right. probably got some on my iPod. <laughs> no, no, put, put Graham Coxon, we might play a bit of Cabaway. Okay. That's terrific. Graham Coxon. What are you going to do now? It's cool. He's a talented man. I don't want to worry you, Jane, but um, uh, what, part of, what part of London do you live in now, Waffley? At Twickenham. I've heard there are clouds heading that way. Now, if you... <laughs> don't! <laughs> I've already well... texted my cleaner to say get the washing. I've heard it's going to be quite a storm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got people on hand. Good, good. Do you have neighbours who look in for you in that respect? <laughs> if a neighbour saw a cloud coming, would they leap over the fence and sit out for you? Well, there are people painting next door, and I said, if it rains, will you get my washing in? Perfect, that's what you need. <laughs> um, uh, Jane can be seen currently on BBC. If you watch Tuesday nights on BBC One at 9pm, it's a series called The Amazing Mrs Pritchard, in which Jane Hawkes basically becomes the Prime Minister. Not you personally, but the character you play. That's right. OK, uh, and, and does it end happily, show six? Oh, well... Don't give um, too much away, but... Not, not really. Um, there's a bit of a dilemma at the end. Would um, this be a conflict between personal wishes and the good of the nation? <laughs> Is this to do with her no, husband? No, I think it's to do with the second series. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a cliffhanger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, what a lovely idea for a show, though, and I hope it does really well for you. I, I said you. I, I'm going to get the... I, I missed the, the second one, so I'm going to get it on tape and so I can watch it and enjoy it properly. Probably not on tape. I might even go for DVD. Hey, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'd like to see that. Trouble DVD is if I get a, all nice and... Well, mm. when you get VHSs of things now, I haven't got anywhere to play it anymore. Oh, well, I do, because I'm old-fashioned. I oh. still have tapes. I've got rid of them. I've got rid of them. <laughs> I don't. I can't work up those other things. Don't be pathetic. I can't. <laughs> don't be pathetic. You put it in. You press play. That's all. You know. Well, the fast forward and the rewind don't seem to work quite as well as a tape. <laughs> That's rubbish because you can chapter skip now. <laughs> 
Oh, I, oh, I don't. Then you get into the wrong place. I, mm. Yeah, but then you go back a little bit. Not on VHS, you can do. You gotta watch it all go for hours. It's awful. If you say you watch something an hour and a half long and you missed up the first hour and someone accidentally rewound it for you, oh, you got to go through an hour here. Click, click, click. click. Yeah, not what you can do the fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, not as good. Not as good. All right, never mind that. Cowboy. Yes. We're talking about Jane in Cowboy. Uh, how long were you on stage in Cowboy for? How long did you run for? Four months. Four months. And, and for you, that's a very, very long time. That Oof, felt like a yeah, huge amount of like work. four years. Okay. <laughs> four months on stage in Cowboy playing Sally Bowles. Um, I, I can't imagine a more joyous way to spend your time. I would have thought turning up and knowing you could be singing and dancing on stage. <laughs> I tell you, I, next year, I can't tell you about it now, but when I'm, I'm doing a pretty big thing myself. Oh, yeah? That, yeah. Not yeah, the Sweeney yeah, Todd yeah. tribute, is it? Well, I would like to do Sweeney. I've decided to I'm going to do a, just a, a one-man show of Sondheim. Mm. Have you got mm. a voice? No. Oh. You could play Sally Bowles. Um, it's a vanity projection <laughs> product, obviously. I'm, I'm hiring the Palladium to see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see what ticket sales like. I would love to do it, though. But I've got no voices, so I can't sing. I can't sing on stage like that, and I, I would miss it. But to be able to do something like Cabaret would have been, I, I think, just a dream. Presumably you did enjoy it. It must have been a great thing to be involved with. Yeah, I did, and it was a great production. Lots of people wanted to come and see it, and, yeah, a really good cast. It was... Uh, no, it was. It, it was good to be in. Did you get to keep the bowler hat? I didn't wear a bowler hat. You didn't I, wear a bowler hat? I, I had a blonde bob. Oh, so it's quite mm. radical. I yes. suppose there's nothing in the text that says she has to be a, a no, dark hair No, I lady. know, exactly. And I sang Cabaret Like Sid yeah. Vicious. And she was German, of course, so that would make sense. <laughs> it's like, you know, that period, it was quite an interesting. Probably better off to be blonde. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, we're going to play a track from this now. We're going to play a track from Cabaret. This isn't your version of Cabaret. Did they release an album? Did you do a kind of a, a cast recording? No, we didn't, actually, but they did record it for Carlton TV. Ah. And so it, 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 it was... Uh, you can get it. I will see if I can get a DVD mm. of it. <laughs> okay, don't, I don't want you sending me your old doggy and old VHS over. I want a nice DVD with chapter headings. Oh, then it's nice, my VHS version. <laughs> Maybe I'll sing along with Tomorrow Belongs to Me. Yes. <laughs> Good choice. Uh, yeah. Um, and we're going to play now Money, Money, Money. Now, you think this is the best track? We've got Money, Money, we've got Cabaret we could play, or we've got Money, Money, Money. Which one would you suggest? Well, money, money, money uh, always reminds me of a, a, a funny event that okay. happened whilst I was doing the show, because um, me and Alan Cumming were dressed up as homeless people uh, when we did this song, and we had um, long black coats on and long, very long black boots, like your shoes, actually. Yes. And, um, and so I was in a box, in a cardboard box, and he opened the box and I jumped out of the box at the beginning of the song. And John Gordon Sinclair, the actor, came to see the first night, and after the first night he said, oh, those boots, they were so fun. Funny, so funny those boots. So he came again the second time to see the, the play, and I thought, oh, I hope I don't laugh. But thinking of John Gordon <laughs> and laughing at my boots, and I was fine. I got through it. And then the third time he came to see, it, he was a very big fan. Um, I said to Sarah Kesselman, who was in it, I, I really think I'm going to laugh. She said, oh, don't be ridiculous. Of course you won't laugh. And I said, no, I really do think I'm going to laugh. I was laughing inside the box. <laughs> in my head. And I came out and I laughed throughout the whole song. <laughs> Mommy, it makes the fuck <laughs> I couldn't even sing my own verse. I was laughing so much. So there was silence at that point, And then I joined in the chorus laughing again. And I laughed throughout the whole thing. And John Gordon Sinclair, who was with Aid Edmondson, actually, that night, was just... Stood, sat at the front. I could see them with their jaws <laughs> in, in horror. I thought, well, they might have laughed with me, and they didn't. They were just horrified at my unprofessionalism. Did that make it worse, though, or <laughs> yes, make the, the laughter yes, worse? Yes, it was terrible. <laughs> All right, well, 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 well that, that's how an unprofessional person would do it. <laughs> Here we have Liza Minnelli, who, despite the fact <laughs> that Frank Sinatra was pointing and giggling at her boots, managed to keep a straight face. Uh, this is money, money, money. That's Joel Grand, Liza Minnelli. In uh, that's the original. Uh, is that the Broadway recording or the movie soundtrack? I've got no soundtrack. idea. It was on our system. I think of uh, Cabaret. Well, that's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. And did that not make you think I'd like to get back on stage? Singing? No, no, <laughs> that song in particular. No, it's so fast. We ended up being exhausted when we. I can't believe how lazy you are. <laughs> I can't believe. It was yes. a, but you try and sing that song when you're doing mm. actions as well. It was really hard. But that's all you're doing all day. <laughs> that's your job. So like once a day, you've got to do one bit of fast action and singing. <laughs> Oh, and that's it. Oh then back no. in your box. Oh, no. We'd, we'd be huffing and puffing. It was like we'd swum the channel after sing, oh. doing, singing that song. I tell you, you, you're ruining it for me. <laughs> I don't want to see performers up there and think they're thinking, oh, thank God, that's over. <laughs> oh, yeah. I used to tick them off. <laughs> tick the nights off and tick the songs off. Oh. that one. Oh. Well, I'm disillusioned now. <laughs> Jane, how lovely to see you. Thank you so much for coming in this morning. Uh, good luck with the rest of the further adventure. Not further adventures. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Pritchard. <laughs> Mrs. Pritchard. Amazing Mrs. Pritchard. Yeah, we 
the further adventures. Uh, you know, I know, you know who I'd love to see you play. Who? Mrs. Pepperpot. Oh. Do you remember her? Well, what's, what's that, that from? A what, Jiggy Winkle. It was a kid's book, and she was oh. a little lady who could shrink to the size of a pepper pot. Oh, yeah, that's good. They've yeah. never done it, have they? I don't know. Hey, have. people right. out there. Do Mrs. Pepperpot, and then follow it up with Professor Brainstorm. Do you remember him? Mm. Mm, vaguely. You don't. You don't. Do you? <laughs> don't I do. You, don't humour me. I do. He had glasses, didn't he, and like a big spiky hair. Yes. Does yes. Mrs. See? Pepperpot have a lot to do? No, she does no singing. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I'm pretty sure she does peg out occasionally. So imagine I'd that. I like to play a part where I was just lying on a beach. <laughs> okay. And occasionally I'd look up at the other actors and see what they were doing. Right. And then I'd put my sunglasses on and just go back on the lounger. Maybe we could get you to play a, a small beached whale, perhaps. <laughs> 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 you know, and, and it could be a goddo kind of thing. People wander around outside mm. going, oh, the whale's here. Mm. Well, no, because I'd have to be in the sea then, wouldn't no, I? No, lie on the beach. No. Really? It's a beach whale. Oh, beach whale, yeah. It's <laughs> Kel. <laughs> you, you could even... Minister, not. <laughs> we could even... You could be a dead whale, and then they could say, look, and you just lie there with your eyes shut. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I could play a dead. Make a note. <laughs> I have played dead. When I get home, let's let's write this. <laughs> OK. OK. <laughs> whale song, we'll call it. Okay. <laughs> Jane, lovely to see you. Good luck with the rest of the series. Not that you need it. And, and what else are you doing the rest of the year? Do you know what you lined up for the rest of the year? Do you have your kind of year planned? No. So no work? <laughs> no, and no work. No bits and pieces? No, uh, voiceovers. Yeah. I do a lot of voiceovers. That must be great, though, for oh, you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> in it's and fantastic. <laughs> Go in the morning, driven there and back. You do about an hour, probably, an hour and yes. a half. Yes, yeah, yeah, well, not even that. Oh, oh Lord. Uh, in and out, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, uh, Whip them off and yeah. then... Um, back home for a bit of domesticity. Mm. Yeah. Sounds pretty much like the perfect life. <laughs> it ain't bad. Jane, congratulations. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Thank you for coming yeah, in. Yeah, thank you.